What is the best way to practice guitar, learn new techniques and improve in general? Many of us think that it would be to use some kind of practice routine. And while these can be effective, I'm sure you've had the experience of being motivated to start a practice routine only to fall off it just shortly afterwards. Well, why is this? Is it our fault? Well, not really. What I've identified as the problem here is usually we're following someone else's practice routine. And this isn't usually in line with the goals we want to achieve when learning guitar. Therefore, today I want to show you you what I've used to help me consistently practice guitar. And I'm not talking about a rigid practice routine here that we practice every single day of our life. At the end of the day, we're not robots, so don't feel guilty if you're not practicing every single day. So the first thing I did was I wanted to get away from that regimented practice routine feeling. It just didn't work for me, and I wanted to be a lot more freer in my approach. And the one thing that I discovered that was absolutely crucial in the approach that I developed was I had to set a clear goal. And these goals need to be in line with my desires, why am I learning guitar? What do I want to do with this? And answering those questions, I was able to come up with ideas that are going to help me stay much more motivated and therefore increase the likelihood of success of sticking with learning that routine. And I found the best way to develop these goals was just to ask myself simply, well, what songs do I enjoy? What riffs, what parts of songs really speak to me that I would want to learn on guitar? So if I walk myself back into the past a little bit here, there was one point where I really wanted to learn this riff that was always focused by tiny moving parts. I found this riff very inspiring, very enjoyable to listen to. So it was a really good motivator to learn that riff. Well, back then I was going through this developmental process. What's the best way that I can achieve this goal in the shortest amount of time with the least effort? And I came up with this three step process. So to begin with, I asked myself, well, what would I need to learn? What would I need to practice to best assist me in learning this riff? And if there was a tab available, I would go and check that out. And I'd also try and find snippets of that person playing the riff online if that was possible too. By looking at the tab, I could get a better general idea of what I would need to learn. I can notice things like, um, obviously this is in a different tuning, this riff, so I'm gonna have to practice using that different tuning. I can also see that there is two-handed finger tapping going on here, so I'm gonna have to look at that. There's also hammer-ons and pull-offs here, and we can also see that there's some string skipping involved. Then depending on my knowledge of the tuning, you know, the, the different techniques here, I can then break that down into, well, what is it I need to practice more of? For example, at that time, I wasn't that proficient in two-handed finger tapping, so that was one thing that I wanted to look at there. I was pretty good with hammer and pull-offs already, so I didn't really have to focus on that too much. Um, I wasn't familiar with this tuning at the time, so that was something I would need to get to grips with. This Looking at the things that I need to learn or practice to get to that goal is in turn developing the practice routine and it's going to help motivate me get to that goal. So this then leads on to step two, which is finding the resources to help develop into a short practice routine. There is an abundance of materials online to help you learn each technique, the tunings, the chords, whatever it is that you identified in the riff, the idea, the song that you're trying to learn. Um, well, you tend to have the opposite problem actually, there's actually too much resources. So what we want to do is actually narrow that down and I find one way that's helped me here was to just to, to attach the term you know, beginner, intermediate or advanced before the term that I was looking for to learn or to practice, depending on my current ability for each of those techniques. You shouldn't be spending too long finding these materials and the more you repeat this process the quicker it will become because you'll find certain websites or certain you know resources that you find uh, useful for you so you can just go there next time you're looking for a particular technique to practice let's say. I'll then take one or two exercises max for each of those techniques I'll try and screenshot them, I'll copy and paste them into a Google document, let's say. And then from that, I've got this reference of the material, the things that I need to practice, and then you know the goal, the riff that I'm working towards. In this case, we can take that you know, tiny moving parts riff. And then also this is wonderful as well, because you can build up this folder in your Google Doc that's a reference of all of the things that you're learning. And also it's um, a good progress you know, check as well. You can see where you started and where you're currently at. I'll then warm up, I'll set up a metronome and I'll work my way through these exercises as comfortable as I can and with as much time as I'm willing to practice or have time to practice that particular week. This may be as much as five times a week or it may be as little as once a week. It really depends on how much free time I have that week. So what I'm trying to say here is you shouldn't be comparing yourself to other people, how much they're practicing. You should be focusing on how much time you have available and how much time you are willing to dedicate to practice. So that leads on to step three of this process. It wouldn't be complete 
if we didn't actually learn some of the song. And depending on the piece, you might be able to learn, you know, a bar or two of it, or you might be able to learn uh, slowly the whole piece itself within that practice session. And this also means we're, we're applying the things that we just practiced. So for example, to go back to my tiny moving parts example, when I was learning the two finger hand, uh, sorry, two hand finger tapping there, um, I could actually then go and try and learn it within the riff. And this felt wonderful. And it was also what I noticed as well was every time I repeated this practice process that I was getting better at it every single time. So it was actually, I was able to notice that I was improving, which is something I really didn't get when I was using other people's routines. And once you've mastered playing that riff when it just becomes second nature to you so you can just pick up the guitar and play it, then it's time to move on to developing another routine. And the wonderful thing is we've got that three step process in place now, we can just rinse and repeat and it's not too difficult to put together. It's your own personalized practice routine just for you and also in line with the goals and desires you are trying to achieve with guitar. In addition to developing these own little mini practice routines for ourselves, we also want to think about the larger picture. What are some of the basic techniques that are used in that style that you're trying to learn. And if you're interested in learning the basics of math rock techniques then I suggest checking out this video next. And if you'd like to learn more about math rock guitar in general then I suggest checking out my math rock guitar ebook, well math rock made easy guitar ebook. Thanks to the patrons and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye!